Hello. Welcome to video 4. Tank system. Go to the content browser, hit right click on tank system folder and select migrate. On the pop-up window, deselect Niagara. Then, select the content folder from your project. You must receive this message. Now, open your project. Go to the content browser, and you should can see the tank system folder. In the project settings window, go to input. Here, you will need to create all inputs for tank control. You can import a file with this setup. Now go to collision and into object channel section, create a channel for projectile and tank vehicle, as well as input, you can import a file with this setup. Go to your map and in the world settings panel, select the tank system game mode. Now, you can play with a vehicle tank. For a vehicle tank body, you will need a skeletal mesh. The wheels, idlers, sprockets, and treads need to be separated from your main skeletal mesh. Your skeletal mesh must have a root, turret, and barrel bones. And for weapon setup, you need some virtual sockets for aim and for projectile spawn. You can use more than one socket. Make sure that the bones transform is the correct for Unreal Engine. Also, you will need to set up the physics primitives for your mesh. The primitives must be inside of the root bone. Select one primitive and set the mass at details panel. Try to keep the biggest primitives closest to the ground to keep down the center of mass. You can disable contribute to mass for the most elevated primitives. Select U Mesh and create an animation blueprint. Enable class settings and implement the tank system interface. Go to the event graph and create the events to update the animation variables. You can copy the nodes from Cobra Animation Blueprint. Don't forget to create the variables. Now, go to the anim graph and create the nodes to animate your skeletal mesh, as the same way you can copy the nodes from Cobra Animation Blueprint. Don't forget to update the nodes with the bone from your skeletal mesh. Go to the master folder and from tank master class, create a child blueprint.
Enter your child blueprint. Select the body component and assign your mesh. Don't forget to assign your animation blueprint too. Now, let's create the wheels. Click on Add Component and select Static Mesh. Name it according to the wheel position. Assign your wheel mesh. And set the collision mode as the next. Adjust the wheel position. Then, just duplicate the component and rename it. And repeat the process for the other wheels. If you are using the same mesh for the other side, you will need to rotate the wheel 180 degrees on Z axis. For suspension handler, you can use any mesh or seam component. This is a reference for the suspension root location. For this example, we are going to use a sphere mesh. Rename according to the wheel where it is located. Adjust the location about up of the wheel. Set the collision as no collision. And check the option hide in game. Then just duplicate and rename the component for the other suspensions. It is recommended that pivot point be at center from the X and Y axis and zero from Z axis like the Cobra example. Click on Add Component and select Instance Static Mesh. Name according to the tread side. Assign your tread mesh. Then set the collision as no collision and make sure to keep the default transform for the component. Then duplicate the component for the other tread side and rename it. Click on add component and select spline. Name according to the track side. Duplicate the component and rename it. Add a static mesh component. And assign your mesh. Set the collision as no collision. 
adjust the location. Duplicate the component and rename it. This step is in order to get the spline coordinates and tangents sheet. Make sure to keep the location for spline component as default, just move the spline points. Now you need to calculate the spline points for the track. You can calculate it with the number of wheels multiplied by 2, plus the total points that you will to use for sprocket and idler. So, for this example we need 20 points. You need to match 2 points for each wheel at bottom and top, and both points have to match in the x-axis. Now, adjust the points and the tangents. Make sure that the option, close loop is enabled. Be patient and take your time to do this process. Now, enable class default and add the number of points at the array from spline and tangents variables. Then, copy the coordinates and tangents from each point and paste at the corresponding variable. If you want to use only one coordinate for tangent, enable the option one tangent chord. Tank system will take into account just the value from arrive tangent. For this setup, we are going to use the coordinates in the example blueprint Cobra. Now, you need to register all these components. To do that, go to functions panel and override the function, get all components. Expand the node. Add the components that you have been created. Make sure to add the wheels components with the correct order. And make sure to add the components in the correct side.
If you have rotated the wheels components, you need to check the option, Flip Anim Rotation. Now in the viewport, when you hit compile you should can see the tank tracks. Go to class defaults and set the treads number for the track. Now let's to register the suspension handlers. Go to functions panel and override the function register suspension handlers. And connect the suspension handlers. Make sure to connect them with the correct order. Go to class defaults and at suspension setup array add an item for each suspension handler you can set up each suspension individually however you can set the same configuration for all suspensions to do that uncheck the option individual suspension setup and set the suspension settings in the variable below now go to your map at world settings panel and set the default palm class with the child blueprint that has been created. Now, you should can play with your class. You can set up the weapons tank at blueprint section, TS weapon setup. First, you need to provide the bone names to control the turret. Also, you need to provide the socket for aiming, from here will be calculated the turret and barrel aim. Then, go to the weapon array and fill all the variables. is important to fill the variable socket spawn from here will be spawned the projectile actor if you have more than one socket you can change the spawn mode don't forget set the projectile actor for your weapon only check the option main cannon for the main weapon cannon for other weapons this option has to be disabled To set up an AI vehicle, you need to do the same process, but taking the AI master class as parent. Also, you can use a vehicle already configured, just changing the parent class.
To do that, go to class settings into your child blueprint and set the new parent class. Once done, you should can see a new section from class defaults. Here you can set up the AI vehicle. For a correct AI working, you need to provide a socket for AI sensing functionality. Finally, change the AI teammate ID and add the class to your map. Go to class defaults at section TS vehicle setup. Here you can set the actor to spawn after vehicle destroyed. So, let's create it. At master folder, create a new child blueprint from damage master class. Into the blueprint, assign the tank damage mesh. As well, assign the mesh for wheel, sprocket, and idler. Finally, adjust the collision box to get a correct visual collision. Go back to your vehicle blueprint and assign the damage actor. And that's it. Now you have a vehicle tank working. Thanks for watching and enjoy it.